ropes and different little things that we call trivial, but they're very real to those who have them. Uh, they're not uh, death threatening, as some say, but they could be. Any affliction can be. Let's pray for all of God's family. We have a number of people in that category. We have some in other categories, but we're here and we can pray. And we're the ones present today. And we're two or three, and there's more than that, gathered together in my name. They ask it. They believe. They confess. He will do what we ask him. He does not refuse the cry of his children. He does not. Ask and it shall be given. Someone said, I asked, but it was given. Do you ever think the fault might be in you somewhere rather than in God? See, we place sometimes the blame on God. Um, you know, but it isn't on God. Because he positively states in his word, ask and it shall be given. So where's the fault? Where is the fault? Where? I want to just get your mind. I want to uh, we, 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 we get confused right now, the people of God do. Oh, Lord, I ask, but you didn't do it. But wait a minute. Where was the line that was drawn? Yes. Uh, did God draw it, or did we draw it? it, it uh, we drew it because God said, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find, knock, and it shall be opened. Praise the name of the Lord. And with God. And with God. All things are possible. Praise the name of God. And with God. Look, you have to build up your faith before you get what you're asking. About. And then you have to believe the minute you ask it, you're going to start getting what you're asking. About. Not the person that may be praying you'll get it, but you that need it. You're the ones that have to believe. See, I can pray for you that you'll get it. But that doesn't do the job. No. If you don't believe, it will not happen. Amen. If you don't believe, it will not come. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. So you present, I, you know, I've, I've been a minister for 67 years. I've watched people say, oh God, you didn't do it. And they didn't say that outwardly. Many times they didn't say it outwardly. Some did. Some just said, God, you didn't do it. And others said, Lord, I, I don't know. I asked, it wasn't there. It isn't God's fault. It lies in the fault of we who serve him. That somewhere there's a missing connection between me and him. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, what do we have then? I say, what do we have? We have fellowship one with another. That's God in you. That's God in you. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of his son cleanses us from all sin. Praise God. Praise God. So we're going to pray right now, and we're going to believe God for many needs we have in the church of Jesus Christ. But let's get the fault line corrected. Let's, let's, let's get the fault line corrected. Somewhere put the line back together that's broken. That static said, put it back together and see what God will do. Yes. Praise the name of the Amen. Lord. Amen. It may mean you repent. Amen. It may mean you cry. Yes. It may mean you giving up something. Yes. It may mean you saying, I'm sorry. It may mean you uh, backing up from what you said. Uh, but whatever it takes, if by any means, Paul said, yes. isn't that what he said? Yes. If by any means, yes. if by any means, yes. I might have paid unto the resurrection of the dead. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to pray right now. Father, we come before you as a congregation. And we lift our hands and we rise up before you and we lift our hearts and we believe the impossibilities are not with you but they're with us. And I believe that all things are possible. You said it in your word. I believe it today from perhaps a soreness in our joint. Uh, to an illness in our body uh, called cancer or whatever it would be, I believe that if we ask, if we ask, it can be given. If we seek, it can be found. Praise the name of the Lord. If we knock long enough and hard enough and righteously enough, it will be open. I believe the impossibility does not lie with you. 
I will not blame you today. I will blame self because self is in the way of my God. And I pray today that self, the carnal man, the nature that is within us, uh, yielding to any impulse, will yield only to the Holy Spirit. And today, Lord, you will bring conviction and uh, conviction and conversion and uh, turning around and, and the linking up the lines uh, we have the verse to heaven. I pray tonight that the Holy Spirit will flow out from this place and flow even to the camera and taking the pictures and wherever people are listening around the world and in different places, they will do the same as we're doing here in the tabernacle. They will repent, they will forgive, they, they will back up, they will uh, have a tender heart, they will walk in the light, because I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, in the name of Jesus, I believe. Amen. Everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor beside you, you love them. Amen. I'm going to uh, <coughs> say, let's give a great big abundant offering to yeah. the Lord, yeah. Yeah. and I know He'll bless us in giving, and we give what we receive. And it is more blessed to give than to receive, but I receive all the time, I tell you. 1966, the Lord said to me, put a very lucrative job. God gave me here with the insurance company. And I didn't start out that way in Bradenton. I came back to Bradenton in 1960, Sister Merlo and I did. Fresh out of the United States Army and had no job. She had none. And we just trusted the Lord. The only thing God provided us with, he did make me a professional landscaper. Uh, I like to use that title. It was actually pushing <laughs> on for <board. laughs> I, But I, I use the title. I'm, someone said, what are you working at, Brother Wallop? I said, I'm a professional landscaper. And uh, I was pushing on for That's what I was doing. That was the only job I could get. And my uncle gave me that job. And he paid me um, bad. He didn't make it very good. He paid me pretty bad. You know, I, it, was not, it was not the most highest pay I got. Uh, but uh, the Lord didn't let, let me stay alive. I kept asking. And he gave me a job with J.C. Penny Department Store and the men's wear. And I, I, I set a record in the old store downtown uh, for men's wear on one given sales day. And um, uh, with that, uh, God blessed me there. But J.C. Penny was a millionaire and his workers were not. And uh, so I decided I needed to move on from there. <coughs> Uh, but uh, God gave me an insurance job, a great company, and one that he blessed me with exceedingly. But in 1964, he told me to quit the job and rely upon him and take care of the church. Well, I did for six months, but I, I got weak in my spirit. You, you know you can get weak in your spirit? After God tells you to do something, you can want to back up on it. After God tells you to go ahead and do it, you can back up on it. Yeah, because you're weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I looked at the uh, church offerings, and I looked at the church attendance, and I said, my goodness, I can't support a family on this. So I talked to my district manager, Mr. Raymer, William Raymer. He said, um, he said uh, John, he called me by my first name. He said, just come get your book, go back out in the field and take your job back up. We didn't want you to quit to begin with. Went back two more years and God uh, blessed me exceedingly, abundantly. And um, the Lord said again, what are you doing out here? And one night I was uh, out in the uh, area where we were writing some policies and um, there was an insurance man up ahead of me that had uh, come in earlier from another company and he uh, was coming out of the house and got in his car and I was pulling up to uh, get into the client that we were going to see. Uh, my 
uh, district, not district manager, my uh, staff manager was with me, and uh, he said we got out, it came with, the car came to a halt, and all of a sudden there was a boom and a shot, and uh, glass was flying, and uh, they had shot the rear window, the other insurance man's window out. And uh, I said to my staff manager, uh, I'd like to go around this block and pray right now. He, he, you know, he, I don't really want to go in that house. And they, uh, he got in his car, fortunately he wasn't killed, uh, but glass was all over him. And again, that voice came to me and said, what are you doing out here? I told you to trust me. I told you to take care of this. Well, I not. I said to the staff manager, this is my last week, Jim. Uh, I won't be back. I'm going to do what God said. Uh, live, die, sink, or swim. My district manager, Mr. Raymer, said, you are a nut, uh, Mr. Marlowe. You are one crazy man to give up a job like this or what you have there at the church. I said, well, uh, you have to do what God tells you. That was in 1966. I haven't turned back since then. Amen. Never have I said I'll go back. I said, Lord, I'm going to do what you asked me to do. Yes. Well, I don't know how many thousands went that way. I do know the riches I have here. I said, I have the riches here. I don't care about the riches that went that way. Praise the name of the Lord. My God is the greatest rewarder you'll ever have in your life. May God help you to realize your riches, or the true riches, is not what we think it is. The true riches is Jesus Christ, his love, his mercy in our lives. So today we're going to give, and God's going to bless us, and uh, <coughs> you give and God will bless you. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, I don't know, I, I would dare to do something real brave here, but I'm not sure I'm brave enough uh, for it. Uh, but um, I don't know, um, uh, Ethel, you think that, uh, and you all got a backup song, some music to back us up, because this may not work. And uh, I always did like a plan out, in case I needed a plan in. Amen. You know, so uh, here, uh, Ethel, uh, you think we could get Alicia up? You think our great grandson would stand up here with us? But Alicia, you think that Julia uh, would stand still with you up here? And we're going to sing a family number. I don't know what it is. Praise God. Uh, something about, you know, what can we sing? Uh, you know, some, some song that everybody knows from the back of Amen. Uh, is he going to do it? Hi, hi Julia. Praise God. Come on and see Poppy. Amen. And while we're singing this song or attempting to, uh, you all just give your offering. And uh, we'll just uh, get up and go back to the offering box and let's give our offering, give it abundantly. This is a rare occasion. Hello there, Julian. Praise God. <coughs> See you on <coughs> <laughs> <laughs>
I've never sang with Poppy. Just think about it. I think we made history. Thank you. Really, it's from my great grandson, Alicia, give them a hand. They have just done good. I appreciate today and uh, I appreciate God's people. I like to say how wonderful it is to have an assembly like you. Sister Marlowe and I take great pride, godly pride, in being able to be ministers and have a ministry to the tabernacle. A wonderful place of God's wonderful people. And a long history with our church. And many good things the Lord has done. Through 74 years of working here, God bringing thousands upon thousands of people and putting us together year by year, week after week, month after month and keeping the fire, the flame burning, even as God did with them. The burning bush that Moses confronted in the desert sands. For that was a picture, wasn't it? That burning bush was a picture of Israel. That God has never let the fire of the covenant go out. That he made with Israel through the Abrahamic covenant. And that burning bush just keeps burning. That's Israel. That's a picture. Um, Paul said these things were written for our admonition. And uh, upon whom the ends of the world is come. And I thank God because here in our assembly that we have still a viable representative group through all of the uh, years, through all of the turmoil of times, and through all of the blessings, and sometimes what men would say would be the uh, downfalls, the uh, curses of life, but we have weathered that as God's family. Whether you did here all your years in faith, or whether this is part of your journey, you made the journey to be here today. <coughs> And to hear this message that God would give us today, give us this day our daily bread. That's what we want, is our daily bread. And we are here to receive that daily bread as the body of Christ, as part of the body of Christ, part of the family of God. We're here not to curse, but to bless. The Bible tells us to bless and curse not. And we want to be able to bless the rest of God's people, all of God's people. We don't want to curse any of the family of God. And uh, I, I would like to see this assembly grow. And if you're here just coming into the assembly and you really don't understand too much about the doctrines, the order, uh, the fellowship that you're mingling with, or maybe you've been here many years and still there's mysteries about why we do what we do the way we do it. Why we worship like we worship. Why we sing like we sing. Why we uh, uh, minister like we minister. You may not think we're too different, but visit a church on Sunday morning and see how different really this church is. Uh, just visit some assembly just to observe, just to see. And you'll see that there's a radical and a vast difference in the way that we have come together here, the way we worship, the way we teach, the doctrines we teach, the uh, <coughs> manner in which we um, have worship, have service. Uh, see, there's a vast difference. And if you don't learn that difference, You'll settle for less and not better. And you'll settle for something that may not be scriptural, may not be in the Word of God, because you didn't learn the difference in the truth and error. Or you didn't learn the difference in, see, you want to know your Bible well enough. You want to stay.
study. I know that Paul said to Timothy, but that's good for the whole church. But study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Study. Hallelujah. Study to show thyself. And then he said to Timothy again, that you may know how that thou us to behave thyself. So there is a code of behavior in the house of God. Hmm. And you'll probably have to change some of yours. And I'll have to change some of mine if I stay in the house of God. Because Paul said, uh, Thou mayest know how thou wilt behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground, I like to say floor, ground floor of the truth. Um, that we, we, we do have an order that's different. We didn't propose it to be different. God just led us into it down through years of study and worship and praise and we didn't go the way of others so we came this way and uh, I find myself now wanting to get more grounded for the Marlo aren't you grounded after 67 years and 71 years in this particular faith this particular order I'm grounded uh, the winds will not blow my house over and the rains coming will not wash it away. And the floods will not overcome it. But I still want to refine myself. I want to go on under perfection. See, I want to go on. I don't want to stagnate. Stagnation is the last station you arrive at before you finally come into the station of damnation. Uh, I, I, want to, I don't want to stagnate. I want to grow. Um, I want to keep growing. Uh, Peter said, as a babe, for me to desire the sincere milk of the word, that I may grow thereby. Well, when do I stop growing? How long do I keep growing? Well, obviously Paul meant more than just as a babe, because he said in um, Hebrews 6 and 1, therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Now you, now you have to get that doctrine before you can take the other forward. Amen, brother. You know, you, I, I've watched men around me. I've watched them a student. I observe people around me. I study their feelings, their attitudes, their looks, their motivations, their sensitivities, uh, because I'm a, I'm a people, and I want you to study me. We all should study one another, not to be like each other in fault or failure, but to try to be like each other in success. In the scriptures, yes. the word of God, be an example. Uh, I, I don't want to be a copy of a person that I feel is all key, they're missing it, uh, they're, they're losing out, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're not as sharp as they should be after proper study, proper time. I don't want to copy of that person. I want to copy a scholar person that's achieving, a uh, person that's learning, developing, growing. I don't want to copy a, a person going around with a sour face and discouraged. I don't want to copy a person that's in the church and out of the church and in the church and out of the church. I don't want to copy a person that's encouraged and suddenly they slide back. You can't find them anywhere. You can't depend on them for anything. Uh, you know, you look around for somebody to fill a water barrel, they're not there. You look around for somebody to carry a load, they're not there. Uh, I don't want to copy a person like that. Because that isn't the kind of example that I read in the scriptures. Uh, I read in the scriptures. And, and this is my code book right here. Uh, I, this is my code book. This is what I go by. Uh, and the scripture said, be a steadfast. So if you're, if you're slipping in and out of a position that God gave you in your local assembly, and you were in it, but you just slipped out of it, and you're no longer going to be counted on, you're not there, you're not in place. And I see a lot of people not in place here. I say it as a pastor, I would get discouraged about people being in their place. I would, get, I would have gotten discouraged several months ago. 
several years ago because people, I see them not in their place. God gave them a place. God brought them in. God set them in music. I see a lot of band chairs. That's, and a lot of people are not in place. I see a lot of people in the usher, not in place. I see a lot of people that serve in the dining room, but they're not in place. Um, and uh, I, I sometimes I see the elders, not in place. Uh, but see, that's not the example that I want to copy. Because a church rises or falls <coughs> on steadfastness, on faith, on the Spirit of God, on simplicity, on uh, humbleness, on uh, giving God a chance to break up the thalagram and uh, let a person be tender and broken and sweet. Uh, God, God, God blesses a church for those that are steadfast. Be a steadfast. You know where that is? Can you tell me where that's located? That's in 1 Corinthians. Yep. The 15th chapter, Paul was finishing up the 15th chapter there, and he said, but be as steadfast, unmovable, unmovable. Man tried to show me out of the pulpit in Chattanooga, Tennessee, years ago, when I went up to Chattanooga to help Brother God Linder, and God told me to stand by Brother Linder, and Brother Linder had suffered a blow in the ministry. And uh, he was a mighty preacher. I love Brother Linder. Fiery man. He blessed his church here. And I love Brother Linder. And I went up there and I got in the pulpit and this man wanted to take it over and, and uh, run Brother Linder away from there. And I stepped up to the pulpit and I gripped it just like this. He said, get out of that pulpit. I said, you know who you're talking to? He said, I'm talking to you. Get out of that pulpit. I said, who are you? Well, I'm just a man here in this city. I said, are you called of God? Well, I don't know what you mean. I said, I, are you anointed of God to fill this pulpit? Well, I never have, but I don't like you in it. I said, well, somebody said all the bad spirits are out in the world. I beg to differ. That's right. Amen. You'll find them right in the church. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I said, sometimes you'll find a bad street right in the church. Yes. Not all out in the world. No, and this, this man, this man said, I'm going to give you a second and I'm going to hit you so hard that I'll knock you out of that pulpit. I just ripped the pulpit. I was a young man then, much younger than I am now. And I've taken some blows in the world, so I didn't know how hard he hit me, but I felt like that if he didn't knock me out, I'd get back up again. <laughs> so I just stood there and gripped it, and I said, I'm not moving. This is God's pulpit. Amen. Men of God fill this pulpit. Hey. Anointed pastors fill this yeah. pulpit. And you have the wrong spirit, and you can't fill this pulpit. So finally, you look at me. He said, you're as stubborn as I've ever met. <laughs> I said, I'm stubborn enough to keep this pulpit sanctified. Sanctified. He finally just could yes, hear it. He, he did this, pulled his feet. <laughs> like an old boy. And he leaped down there and grabbed his little wife, little woman, I remember. She was sitting down. <laughs> and he grabbed her and jerked her by the arm socket. I thought he was going to jerk her arm off. And went to the back door and said, <laughs> I won't be back here in this place. I'm going to find me something to drink. I thought, oh God, thank you, Lord, you delivered me. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for delivering me. Because if he got that drink in him, I, I might not have been delivered. But God delivered me before he got the drink in him. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. See, but God can do a lot of things. God can do a lot of things. But be steadfast. If God gave you a place in music, be steadfast. If God gave you a talent, be steadfast. If God gave you a, a, a giving spirit, be steadfast. If God gave you a patient spirit, be steadfast. If God gave you a, a ministry uh, to bless God's people, enlarge the ministry, 
grow in the ministry, um, and finally do whatever God would have you to do, be steadfast in it. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And so uh, we, 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 go, we take the doctrine of Christ. Hebrews 6, I'm going back to that now. He said, uh, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. See, some people can't even leave the principle of the doctrine of Christ. How can they go on to the doctrine of baptism? Eternal judgment, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead. That's four other doctrines. But you have the doctrine of Christ. And the doctrine of Christ must be in the church, in my life and your life, in the life of the saints, before you ever get an understanding or a perfect understanding of the doctrine of baptism, eternal judgment, laying on hands, resurrection of the dead. You're getting a tall timber. When you're going to those four doctrines, you're going to be a scholar if you learn those four doctrines. The doctrine of baptisms, eternal judgment, laid on the hands, resurrection of the dead. You're going to get in tall timber when you're getting those four doctrines. And the doctrine of Christ, the principles of the doctrines of Christ. What is it? Uh, what, what are the principles of the doctrine of Christ. What was, doc uh, what was Christ's doctrine? Study, uh, study the Gospels. You'll have to study the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, beginning with Matthew 5, to get the doctrine of Christ, the teachings of Christ. You'll find the teachings or the principles of the doctrine of Christ was being broken putting yourself on the rock, falling on the rock, being humble, being broken, being forgiven. Look at Matthew 5. I'll just use a few of them there. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. <coughs> Uh, blessed are they uh, that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And uh, that, uh, that's just a few of them there. Uh, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Uh, see, uh, see that. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. That's just the beginning of some of the principles. Do you young people know that doctrine? Are you studying it? If I walked in your house right now, do you have a Bible to study did you have some notes? Um, where we're studying the principles of the doctrines of Christ. And as elders and as, as the church body, are we putting that into practice right here among us? The meek, the poor in spirit, the humble, uh, the, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Because these are principles of the doctrine of Christ. And one time, we, are, are we hungry? Does your weekly church attendance show that you're hungry and thirsting after righteousness? How many excuses do you put in the way that you can't come to more than one service a week? <laughs> how, many, how, many, how many excuses do you make uh, that uh, it's because I don't feel good? You probably didn't feel good on Tuesday or, or Friday. Is that a reason? Is that a reason I don't feel good? Um, well, things are not going my way. <coughs> How often have they gone your way in life? Did it have, all your life, haven't you had a struggle? Hasn't there been something come against you? All right, uh, but, but, but I'm running short of time. Well, I'd rather even be tardy and be in the house of God. And I'd rather be tardy, getting out of the way. Uh, how, how much do we place before hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Uh, blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be fed. Uh, I, I, I don't know if I can, yeah, I'm able to do it or not. Uh, yes, you are, because right now, if someone told you there was a train run off the track coming through your house, 
You may have arthritis, may be crippled, hardly able to move, but I'll guarantee you, you will try to get out of the way of that train coming through your eyes. That's like an elderly man who looked at children where W.T. Henry was going to run him down. We were on our way in Miami to a church service. And W.T. was driving and singing and never slowing down the sister. You think he was in the car with him? Uh, sister Linda Sanders, some of them, we were in the car following. That crippled man was trying to get across that street. Okeechobee, like this. W.T. never missed a beat. He was singing some song. He just kept coming. Finally, that man decided, no matter how crippled he was, he was getting out of the way of that car. That cane went up in the air and he... <laughs> you might die right there. Amen. What would you do? It's amazing what we can do when we have to do it. And it's amazing what excuses we put as to why when we don't want to do anything. We're not hungering and thirsting after righteousness. But for tomorrow, I, I, I tell you things, yes, a lot of things go bad. We have some families in the church that there's absolutely conditions. Uh, I, I love Sister Vanessa's testimony last night. Oh, yes. That no matter what her and Brother Mike would run into, run through, what they are running through, what they do have to deal with, that she was determined to make it. Amen. I'm paraphrasing Amen. her words. Amen. And her and Mike was determined Praise to make it through. God. So, uh, 11... Let's study the word leaven a minute, would you? Uh, you have your Bibles? Uh, in Matthew, the 16th chapter, what verse is that? 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, I think it's 6. Matthew 6, uh, verse uh, chapter uh, 16. Uh, the scripture said, uh, uh, yes, uh, verse 6. Uh, I want to, to pin my thoughts on that. Uh, Matthew, the 6, cha 16th chapter, Verse 6, Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Beware of the leaven, the leaven of the Pharisees and the, Sadduc of the Sadducees. Um, and they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. They didn't understand it at all, as most of us don't understand when Jesus gives us a spiritual thought. Verse 8 said, which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason you among yourselves because you have brought no bread? Do ye not yet understand? So if you're having a hard time understanding, 2,000 years ago the people Jesus was talking to were having a hard time understanding spiritual language he was using with it. And they said it's because we've taken no bread. But then, verse 9, I'll repeat it, do you not yet understand? Neither remember the five woes of the 5,000. How many baskets you took up? Neither the seven loaves of the 4,000. How many baskets you took up? Verse 11. How is it then that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread? So I want, I want to bring out a point here. How many times in my tired mind are my loaded agenda, and some of you have more than a loaded agenda, um, it's easy for the enemy to find the crack right there. When your mind is too loaded, when you're going through too much, when you're being stressed out, we all are at times, some time or another. I have been occasionally now, not occasionally, and change that. Uh, it's easy for the enemy to get in. What is that song that said, when you're up on the mountain, it seems so easy. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain. The enemy doesn't bother you when you're on the mountain. The enemy doesn't come at you, Brother Matthew, when everything is going along with a song. But when the tune breaks down, 
when the rhythm gets out of rhythm, when things start going, then the enemy lurks in the shadows. I'm going to take them now. That's the Amalekites, the Hittites, all the Girgashites, all those sevenites, those seven nations. Did you know they never attacked him, Joshua and Caleb? They went to the rear. They picked up the weak. They picked up the elderly. They picked up the sick. And they attacked Israel from the rear. And that's why God said to David, destroy, and Saul, and Saul didn't, and Saul died and lost his kingship because of it. God took the Saul's kingship away from him because he refused to obey the command of God, destroy the Amalekites. Yes, sir. Utterly. 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 God said, don't leave a child. Nothing. Don't leave an animal. Don't leave one. Because God was angry that they had attacked Israel. And God never forgot. God has a memory that never forgets. Amen. And they attacked it. Uh, that's when the enemy will attack you. When your bank account is low. When your husband is going through a difficulty, when your wife is going through something, when your children are being tried, when the car is breaking down, when the, the family isn't operating well, when the children are having problems, when there's difficulty in the house, then the enemy comes in and says, you know, you don't need to serve God. It's just like being in the world. What advantage is there in serving God? You've got troubles. Just like there, there is in the world. No, you don't. No, you don't. I don't care what you're going through. The worst day of your life with God is better than the best day you'll ever have without God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name. Let me say that again. I don't care what you're going through. The worst day you'll ever have serving God is better than the best day. You'll never have without God. See that that that's leaven. That's leaven. And they didn't understand. They thought he was talking about bread. And it's hard for us to understand what God is saying to the church right now. I've been in the pulpit uh, a good part of my life. I find it difficult to speak to people now. More than I ever have in my life. It seems it would be easier. But it's more difficult because there's more static in there. There's more things to draw people's minds. There's more things coming at the church. There's more tribulation that we're dealing with. But we cannot give up one inch of ground. The Bible said give no place. Can you quote the rest of it? <laughs> give no place to the devil. Give no place to the devil. We can't give up an inch. Jesus had to get this lesson over. And he said, uh, neither the, and he called back the memory. He said, don't you understand how I fed the 5,000? Don't you understand how I took care of the 4,000? And finally the light came on. And those men around him began to see that Jesus, he said in verse 14, 11 rather, how is it then that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, and you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees, then understood they. I want you to say that with me. Then understood they. Let's say it again. Then understood they. How that he made them not because we were of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine. Well, oh, I see. I see. So doctrine is leaven. Doctrine is leaven. Of the leaven, the, the doctrine of the of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. See, um, there were seven feasts in Israel. Uh, we have all kinds of holidays, Father's Day, Mother's Day, uh, National, uh, National Broom Day, uh, National Donut Day. 
all things to make a holiday out of it. A donut. I need it like I need a holy bag. God help me with a donut. Don't tell me with those things. Krispy Kreme will give you a free one. Dunkin' Donuts. They didn't have to buy a drink from Dunkin'. Oh my goodness. But, you know, but I'll guarantee you they people got the donut. You know. But Israel only had seven holidays. Israel only had seven feast days. Seven. That's all they had in their entire year. And four of them, four of them were in the spring. And three of them were in the fall. And that's a picture of the feast of the Old Testament and the feast of the New Testament. And they were uh, the seven making up the complete giving of God to man on the earth to bring him back to the seventh day of perfection. And in that seventh day, he'll use seven vows. Revelations 8, 9, 10. He'll use seven trumpets. He'll use seven thunders. And before he does that, He'll lose four winds. And he's getting ready to lose them right now. And I'm going to tell everybody in this room, in the church in Bradenton, God's talked in my heart about doing some things. And I'll be talking to you men. I'll be talking to you elders. And I'll be talking to the church. But he that is forewarned is forearmed. And do not expect this placid way of life we have to continue. God is getting ready to upend the world. Upend the nations. And the nations are going to be like a drunken man. They're going to stagger and they'll vomit the vomit of men and they'll fall. Don't expect people to tell God a lie. I had some people tell me, met them uh, through the week. They said, Brother Marla, we're going to be in church Saturday night. They didn't show last night or today. Right. Did you know when you tell God something like that, you tell God a lot. Yes, See, we're really living in a day when people are too careless. They're, they say things they don't mean. They say things they don't make commitments for. That's the same character of the world. The world will tell you something they don't want to mean it than anything. That's why they've got these long contracts. You better read the contract if you can. You can't read the contract. Because the contract doesn't mean anything anymore either. Because there's loopholes in all the contracts. So I've got a warranty. Better read your warranty. Because that's man's warranty. And where man is, he fails. Where God is, he never fails. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I want to put my trust in God rather than in man. Amen. The Bible said, Cursed is he that leaneth on the arm of flesh and trusteth in man. So uh, the, these, these feasts, uh, the, the one that I, that I want to uh, <coughs> speak about is dealing with leaven. Because the feast that took place, now let me, let me get my uh, scriptures here before you, you can study with me. Uh, we're, we're studying leaven. Leaven is salted dough. The salt in it is the leaven, or yeast. Anything in that dough, that bread, that is not bread. It's alien to that bread. Israel could not present that to the Lord. They had to have a feast of unleavened bread. Now let's look at Exodus 12. Right here, we're, we're leave Matthew 16 for a minute and go to the Old Testament and uh, let's, let's deal with um, uh, Exodus 12. Uh, and uh, I'm going to bundle this into a channel area if I, if I may be able to do that. Um, but he was... Um, uh, let, let's go down to skip some verses. Uh, well, no, we can't do that either. Hardly not focus. Verse 1, Exodus 12. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Now, what was the beginning of Israel's civil and religious year? It was the seventh month, uh, but it was the first month and the tenth day. It was the month of the bed, the sun. <coughs> That means March, April. In the month of March, April, God said, this is the beginning of your year. This is the beginning of months. Then God made a feast, the feast of the Passover. The, the Passover means simply, I will go over you. Yes. I will not attack you. Yes. You will not be cursed as I will curse Egypt. And so he said uh, in verse uh, 3, Speak you unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor take him to his house, Take it according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for, uh, for the lamb. What is that a picture of? That's a picture that an assembly can be too small. If an assembly gets so small that they can't eat the whole lamb, or if a ministry gets so small, it can't eat the whole lamb. It needs to find another house, yes. part of the house of God, another fellowship of God's people, another fellowship of ministers. That's why I so appreciate not me talking, but the Lord did him, Brother Von Reynolds, and bringing him to Bradenton. Yes. Because we need, Brother Von, minister here to eat this land. Amen. We need the church to grow. Because we have an ample supply of ministers. Amen. We've got more ministers. I think there's 12 pastors in this church. Men that have had experience in teaching, building, some more, some less. The church. I think there's 12. 12 or 13. That have had ministerial, pastoral experience. Teaching, feeding the people of God. 12 in this church. Uh, we need more lambs to eat. So we need to grow. We need to grow. Sheep, you need to beget more sheep. See, I can't beget sheep. I'm a pastor. Sheep beget sheep. The shepherd never beget sheep. It's the sheep that beget sheep. See, a shepherd never did bring another sheep into the fold. It's the sheep that begets the sheep. And if the, if the sheep stop begetting sheep in the church, have you begat a sheep recently in the last year? Have you found a soul to speak to, to convert, to bring with you to church? See, because the sheep begat sheep, the pastor cares for them. He's a shepherd. And if the lamb, if, if he said, if the, if the household is too little, call another house in because they had to consume all of the land. Did you know, brethren, around me and saints, if we fail to eat all of the land, all of the Passover, all of the Word of God that we're supposed to eat to make us uh, whole, and to have the Passover observed in our life, we'll, we'll fail God. That's why it's necessary for a church to grow. And we can't sit and say, uh, who is me? Our church is getting smaller. No, it's up to us to see that it doesn't. It's up to us to see that it grows. So we can only beget sheep. Just beget some sheep. Don't lead sheep away. Don't put on the household down. But beget sheep, that the, the, the church may grow thereby, and we can eat the whole end. See, this picture here, I'm, I'm showing you, the
the picture. Um, and if the household be too little, verse 4, for the lamb, let him uh, and his neighbor next to the lamb, uh, uh, let him uh, and his neighbor next unto his house, take it according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on two side posts and on the upper door post of the house wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire, unleavened bread, unleavened bread. Because on the 15th day, following the killing of the lamb, on the 14th day, the lamb was put in the pen on the 10th day. On the 14th day it was taken, and it was killed without being sodden with water, roast with fire, eating it in haste with a staff, the picture of the Word of God in their hand. The Word of God ought to be in every house in the church of the living God. And they were to eat of it in haste with their shoes on, have their understanding, have their feet shod, and they were to eat the Word of God, the Lamb. That's what we do in tithe, in Victor. They ate the natural Lamb back there in the desert. That was the Passover. The death angel did not come to the house where the blood was smitten on the side post and, which is, and, and the lintel of the house. What, what is that a picture of? The, the side post is a picture of the soul and the spirit. The, the lintel is the body. Three parts had to be sanctified. When, when you sanctify the lamb in your life, he has to sanctify body, soul, and spirit. The blood has to be applied to body, soul, and spirit. Present the whole body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable uh, service. And with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Are we eating some bitter herbs along with eating the lamb right now? I am. You are. Because the bitter herbs is a tribulation you're going through. It's the stress, we call it. It's the test, we call it. The bitter herbs. But we're to eat the lamb with the bitter herbs. We eat the lamb without sodding it with water. Eat it dry. Let it, let it go into your body uh, as it is, the lamb. Let the blood be sprinkled as it is to keep the death angel from coming to our house. Because I don't want the death angel to come to my house. I want the death angel to go past me. Praise the name of the Lord. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, who oh, is so important is this a bloody assembly? Is there blood in this assembly? Amen. Is there blood on the side post, the lintel? Amen. Are we eating the lamb? Praise God with unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. See, not doctrine that is wrong. If I eat the lamb of God, my understanding takes in Jesus Christ, and I comprehend him, but I'm eating it with some uh, doctrine of the Pharisee, of the Sadducee. That's unleavened bread. Amen. The only way I'm to eat the lamb, eat the word, has it, have his blood applied, is to eat the unleavened bread, <coughs> the scriptures, right. without man's interpretation. Amen. The scripture, Amen. without man's understanding. Amen. Amen. I said, the word of God only does you good when man's interpretation is not in it. When the word of God is the word of God given you by anointing and by revelation, it's unleavened bread. 
Praise the name of the Lord. And unleavened bread will make you whole. Unleavened bread will save you. But beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. That's leavened bread. And, and teaching and ministry with man's interpretation without proving it by the scriptures, that's, that's, leaven, that, that, that's leaven bread. But eating of the word of God where the Holy Ghost anoints it, scripture proves scripture, revelation <coughs> gives it to you, and you get an understanding because you're not just hearing me say it, but while I'm saying it, it's proven by the scripture, and then the word of God backs it up by quickening and anointing of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost comes in. Praise God. Don't you know, I know when the Holy Ghost is speaking to me. Last night, when Brother um, here got to his daughter, Brother Benjamin, Rodriguez, and Barbara, and Mary Annie came down here. And, and God gave her the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yes. It just came down. Wasn't that beautiful last night? Yes. Wasn't that wonderful the way the Lord yes. just came in? Yes. Praise God. Yes. We had a wonderful service. The Lord just broke in, interrupted. Yes. Came in. Yes. And the Holy Ghost just took hold of those little girls. And that little Mary, and of course being older than that, she's a young woman. But God came in. It's a leavened bread that feeds your soul. It's a leavened bread, wrong doctrine, wrong teaching, wrong interpretation, whether it's yours or theirs, that will lead you astray. And you'll say, I don't really have to listen to what that man is saying. After all, I, I make up my own mind. No, you can't. No, you can't make up your own mind. If I'm right, I'm right. No, you're not right because you think you're right. Hate to burst your balloon. Hate to tell you that. Well, I'm right. I know I'm right. No, you're not right if the Word of God doesn't back it up. Amen. If the Word of God doesn't prove it. If the Word of God isn't standing behind it. Then that's righteousness. And let's go to another scripture in dealing with leaven and unleaven um, using that term. Uh, I did want to point out that in the, uh, if you read on in the uh, book of Exodus, um, that the feast of unleavened bread started, uh, there were three feasts that began almost simultaneously there. Uh, the, the Passover, Christ being the, on the cross and signifying the Passover, eating of the lamb of the early church, and obeying the principles of the doctrines of Christ and the church being formed. Uh, he said the gates of hell would not prevail against it. And then on the 15th day, on the 14th day, the lamb was killed. They kept him four days. That was a picture of 4,000 years that Christ was retained in the heavens. The lamb was kept penned up of God the Father and did not come to the earth until four days after Adam transgressed and God put him out of the garden, the lamb waited four days, 4,000 years, before God set up the Passover. But after four days, the lamb was taken from the pen. And Christ being that lamb, without blemish, without spot, the Passover lamb. Not any lamb could be the Passover lamb. It had to be a lamb it was penned up, kept separate, and then without spot, without blemish. Uh, not any lamb could be offered for the Passover lamb. But Christ could be, because Christ was in the world, but not of the world. He didn't have sin. Sin was not in Christ's life. He was made sin, and is made the lamb, made man, made the son of man made sin, not to sin, but made sin, not to sin, but made sin. Who knew no sin? Who knew no sin? That the righteousness of God uh, might be found in us through him. And then when he was offered, 
on the 15th day of March, April, because Israel only has a 350 day um, year to their, uh, that is, to their year. We have 360 days. We go by the Gregorian calendar. Israel goes by the Jewish calendar. They only have 354 days. They're short six days every year from our years. That's why the calendar of Israel is um, far back of the Gregorian calendar that we use. And if you study times according to Israel and the Jewish times, they're not 2017. They're far back of that. They're nearing the 6,000 year. Uh, they're more accurate in their timekeeping than the Gregorian calendar is because they uh, multiply 354 days to the year. And they combine the month of March, April. And on the 15th day following the Passover, they began another feast. And it was the feast of the unleavened bread because they could not eat bread with leaven in it for the next seven days. They had to keep on eating bread without taste of man. It had to be different. It was unleavened bread. There was nothing in it but bread. The Word of God has to have nothing in it but the Word of God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I don't care what a preacher wants to put in this, he better not do it. He's leavening this. It better be unleavened. When it goes over this pulpit and you get it, it better not have my precept and my reasoning and my cause in it. It has to be the pure Word of God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord that you receive so you can keep the feast of unleavened bread. Then on the 16th, they began to keep the feast of the first fruits. And they combined the Passover in the feast of unleavened bread, which is eating truth and not man's doctrine. But you have to have the Passover before you even start eating. Because you can only take unleavened bread to get the lamb and eat the lamb. And when you begin to eat Christ, you have to eat nothing but Christ yes, yes. and the principles of Christ. That's why we need to bring Jesus back in the church again. I don't mean just once in a while. Do we praise him enough? No, we don't. Do we sing songs enough? No, we don't. Do we rejoice enough? No, we don't. Because we need to rejoice. Yes. And we need to rejoice again. Amen. And rejoice evermore. Yes. And rejoice for them that rejoice. Yes. And weep for them that weep. Yes. Praise the name Amen. of the Lord. Yes. Be one body and one spirit. Amen. Because we need to celebrate the Passover every time we come together. Amen. When is our Passover? It's today. Yes. It's today. Yes. Because the Passover uh, is the celebration of the eating of the lamb. I'm trying my best to eat all I can and get everything I can in the short time I have here in this service today. But I don't want to stop here. That's why, well, Brother Marlowe, I, I, need, I need to take a break. Well, do you? Do you really need to take a break? Do you really need to take a break? Do you need to follow up the lamb, eating Christ? You say, how can I solve my problems? Eat more of the lamb. You're hunting for a relief for your problem. You're fun hunting for a cure-all, a way out of your problem. You'll never get that until you eat enough of the lamb That's right. that you get everything else out of you Amen. but the lamb. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Amen. We, we want solutions to problems. There's only one solution. Let's get the feast days in. Yes. Not naturally, as Israel did, but bring them back in spiritually. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And celebrate the feast. And eat Christ. Oh, I, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to get the church in divine order. You're not without Jesus Christ being in here and everybody applying their lives, everybody putting flesh back and the spirit first, everybody putting the carnal man down. 
and the spiritual man forward, everything <coughs> becoming him, that they're not going to let anything keep them from worshiping God, praising God, putting the Lord first, uh, giving themselves over to God, because every disease and every illness and every problem and every habit and every demon possessed a person that might be, God will take care of them. Yes, Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Because he is greater than the enemy ever has been. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. So they went right from the feast of the Passover. Christ must come in. Christ must take the church again. I'm looking for a healing one day. You'll never get it till you need enough of Christ. You'll never get it. I'm looking for the church to get in divine order. Eat enough of Christ. Get rid of all the unleavened. And that is the leavened bread. Eat Christ. And then keep the feast of nothing but Jesus. The bread. The word. Keep putting it in. Keep applying it in the church. Keep teaching. Keep evangelism. That's right. Keep keep the word. My goodness, I when Brother Matthew was ministering last night, he was in an evangelistic spirit. Yes. I tried my best to get back at him and, and say, Lord, bless this man. Yes. Yes. Oh God, let him be you. If you'd been on your feet, Brother Short, I'd have been back of you. Yes. Brother Hand, I'd have been back of you. Yes. Brother Harrison, I'd have been back of you. Amen. Because whenever there's a gift speaking, yes. I want to say, Lord, let that gift get loose. Amen. Lord, let that gift stir the church. Yes. Lord, let that gift bless the church. Yes. Because how many believe we need more of Jesus right now? Yes. Yes. Do you believe we need more of Jesus than we ever have? Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Because you can't get rid of that carnal man. You can't get rid of that carnal nature until you're willing to pay the price of saying, I'm giving it up. I'm walking away from it. I'm not going to have it in my life anymore. And that takes you being in church 24 hours a day with a prayer band around you, praying and the word of God being preached and somebody singing a song and let's have church like we never had. I say, let's move from where we are right now and go up higher. Higher than we've ever been. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Take the next step. Go deeper. The unleavened bread is the word of God. And the feast begins when you keep the Passover. And when you keep the Passover, Christ sanctifying your life, setting it apart. And you really want to come to the church. You really want to find out what's going on. You don't want to stay, to come early and stay late. You want to stay until the last word has been said. You're hungry and you thirst. You're going to get your healing. You're going to get your deliverance. But you'll never get it a little dab will do you. You'll never get it just a little bit. You've got to eat the whole lamb. Praise the name of the Lord. Am I too firm here today? Am I? Is Brother Marlowe being too straight? Praise the name of the Lord. How many of them, how many think the Israelites escaped the death angel that said, I'm not that hungry. I don't care. I'm going to eat a shank of the lamb. I'm going to keep the rest for tomorrow. How many thinks the death angel would have not come by that house? Praise the name of the Lord. And eat the whole lamb. Everything in it. Everything that pertained to it. The bitter herbs. And then the unleavened bread. And unleavened bread doesn't taste good. We like salt and bread. We like uh, uh, flavor and bread. And I have all these bread flavors now. Satisfy the appetite. And then when they... Uh, when, when that came about, uh, then they kept the first fruit. Did you know we'll never present the first fruit of righteousness in the church until we first keep the Passover? And then we eat the feast of the unleavened bread for a perfect number of days, seven days. I don't know how long it will take you eating 
unleavened bread, straight doctrine, the truth by revelation. I don't know how long it will take, but I can tell you this, it will take seven days. Because you're going to have to keep the feast. And the seven days is the perfect number of days for you to eat that. Praise God. So if you got a little bit and you feel good, come back for more. Eat the whole lamb. Keep the feast. And then the first fruit starts in. And you can bring the first fruit. And the first fruit will be your righteousness you present to God coming from eating of the lamb keeping the Passover and keeping the feast of the unleavened bread, eating the word of God, then the first fruits. But you couldn't present those first fruits and keep that feast unless you kept the feast of the unleavened bread. And you couldn't keep the unleavened bread without eating the lamb. Praise our God. Yeah. I, had, I had it from a reliable source. This guy was a rabbi. He, he told he told the truth. Say that loud. They won't be here. I said I, I, I got it from a reliable source. This fellow was a rabbi, and he told uh, he told it uh, from the truth. I have no reason to uh, disbelieve it because he got it from a rabbinical order. That the Pharisees they still had their Passover lamb, but they dolled it up and made it so sweet and nice that everybody could just lines. They had longer lines than the ones that were serving the unleavened bread. Yes. Yes. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. I'll agree with that, Rabbi. Yeah. And that's what Jesus meant when he said that they had, you know, they were longing for, for what the Pharisees were serving. And he, uh, he told them, he said, get away from that. And what he was teaching was so much different than what they were offering. Beware of their leaven. Of their leaven. Yeah. Beware of the leaven, the doctrine, the easy way out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say to the church here this afternoon, and I love you all and appreciate you all, I am not going to tell you that once on Sunday is going to get you saved. And go Amen. 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 Did I say it straight? Amen. Did you pinch a little bit? No. Did you feel like I pinched you a little bit? No. I'm telling you that we need to start more Bible studies, more prayer meetings, more sanctifying meetings, more family nights, more fellowship, more togetherness. I'm going now, Brother Marlowe, too much. No, we're not going enough. Pray, oh my goodness, Brother Marlowe, I can't go anymore. You don't know what you can do if you get real hungry. Amen. Amen. I'm brother, I don't do that. I'm telling you, I've already said myself. I've got my calendar. That's the way it is. I want to move me from my calendar. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. But if you'd have been like that with this, uh, God back there with Israel, you'd have been in trouble. God said, no, on the certain day, you eat the Passover lamb. Praise God. On the certain day, you start eating unleavened bread. On the certain day, you bring the feast. They didn't give. The remarkable thing about Israel is, we can say all we want to about the old covenant lacking. But the one thing about the law, the law was the law. And it was that way. And God said, that's my law. And that's my righteousness. But to bring the church in to where we just, uh, well, any day, any doctrine, any teaching, any belief, any standard that I set or they set or we set, and you'll find somebody, if you say that Jesus is coming back in a, on a bicycle, he's riding a swim bicycle, coming back when he comes back the second advent, did you know if you search far enough, you'll get somebody to agree with you? If you ask enough people, somebody will agree. He's coming back on a swim bicycle. But no, he isn't coming that way. No, no. The scripture said, Behold, he come up with clouds. Praise our God. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Closing scripture I want to use here um, that, that uh, is... Uh, dealing 
with lemon, and we have about uh, 10 minutes or so. Uh, I think I have before I exhaust your time. But in 1 Corinthians 5, uh, Paul was dealing with this condition in the church of fornication and one having his father's wife. Yes. The second verse of 1 Corinthians 5, and uh, uh, chapter 5, he said, And you are puffed up, and, not, and have not rather mourned, that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from on you. The third verse, he rebukes them and tells them that he, uh, though absent, is judging the case. In the fourth verse of 1 Corinthians 5, he said, deliver, here's what we'll do. We're going to turn this man over to Satan yes. for the destruction of his carnal desires yes. or his flesh, that the spirit, the spirit may be saved. Paul didn't care what God was going to do about the body, but he said that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Verse 6, he tells them their glory is not good. Verse 7, he said, you do this now. Purge out therefore that old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you're unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. What do we do in the church with all the needs and conditions, and I've mentioned several here today, uh, the flesh appetite, uh, the feelings that we only can do so much of that's enough, uh, the, the sheep uh, losing the desire, the shepherd losing his to preach righteousness, the sheep losing theirs to worship him in spirit and in truth, if that be the case. I don't believe all sheep are doing that. I believe there's hungry people of God. There's zealous people of God. I believe there's people of God that love him as much as they did 40 years ago, 30 years ago. Also, I see leaven that has been put into the church. I see wrong doctrine. I see wrong habits. I see wrong morals. I see wrong standards. I see lack of faithfulness. I see people that has a different desire set their own bar, their own standard. Um, that's enough. That's, that's enough. Don't anybody ask me anymore. That's it. Well, that's all natural to man because man is contrary to God. The flesh lusteth against the spirit. The spirit warreth against the flesh. And these two are contrary one to another. And after all, brethren, around me, church around me, the church has gone through a, a great tribulation already. There's another tribulation that's facing the world and there's a tribulation period uh, facing the, the uh, falling away church yes. uh, but the glorious church will be taken out of that tribulation. The remnant church, the overcomers, will be taken from that tribulation. There is a tribulation coming upon the earth yes. and it's going to come upon the world. But I as a righteous man as Lot was taken out of Sodom, I can be taken out of the world that's coming to pass right now. Amen. The evil and the dirt and the sin, I don't have to be vexed in my soul. I'm vexed right now. I'm vexed with pornography. Uh, I'm vexed with um, uh, demon people uh, 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 seizing children. I'm vexed with ungodly things. I won't go into it all. I could go into a lot of them. I'm vexed with sin. Are you vexed with sin? The church ought to be vexed with sin. That is aggravated. I'm vexed with the drugs that's taking over. I'm vexed with people that are seizing opportunity uh, to adulterate children, men, women. I'm vexed with those blowing up people in Manchester, England and, and, and running cars into people in Times Square. I'm vexed with people are running into people on London Bridge. I'm vexed for the kind of world I live in. I'm vexed for the world I ever made it. I want to see Jesus come and straighten it out. Amen. I want to see a millennium for in God's righteousness. I'm, I'm, I'm aggravated with the world I live in. 
I'm not leaving. So I'm all right with it, Brother Marlowe. If you're comfortable with this world, friend, you'd be comfortable with too much that I couldn't be comfortable with. Because I believe, I believe that God wants us to purge out any kind of leaven, whether it be sin, whether it be wrong methods, whether it be falling back into a place we shouldn't be, we should strive to get revelation and teaching and overcoming. And let's bring the doctrine of overcoming back into the church. Did you hear what I said? I, I say let's bring the doctrine. Oh, it's in the scriptures. Let's bring the doctrine of killing the flesh, putting down nature, overcoming the flesh, overcoming the world, overcoming the desires. I believe God wants us to be in the world, but not of the world. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe God wants me to reach out for a man or woman that doesn't believe and show them the love of God. I believe God wants to see sinners come to him. I believe the Lord wants to see the church have revival. I believe the Lord wants the church to rise up and be victorious in these last days. Praise God, because it isn't over with. Jesus has a work to be done yet in gathering his people. Praise God. There is going to be a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Jesus is coming again. There are going to be people saying songs and bless God. Don't give up on me. I'm not going to give up on you. You fulfill what God wants you to do. I'll pray for you. I'll stand back of you. I'm bone of your bone. I'm flesh of your flesh. Uh, this isn't the last meeting we'll have by the grace of God. We're getting ready. We're preparing. We, we have a work to do yet before Christ comes. The church must be busy until the very last day and the very last hour. So look at this verse here. And we'll close out the thoughts we have right now with this. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump. Praise God for the new lump. I want to be a, I don't mind being a lump if I can be a new lump. I don't want to be the old lump. Uh, let me be the new lump that uh, Christ brings about through his word and through his blood. Let us keep the feast and uh, as you're unleavened, verse uh, 9, uh, that is 7, uh, as you're unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Now the closing verse, therefore let us keep the feast. Keep, yes. keep the feast. Yes. We'll be back here at 6 o'clock to keep the feast. Keep the feast. Hope you're right here with us. Not with all leaven. None of the old leaven that we even remembered when we came in here today. If we purged any leaven, if we purged any leaven, mm -hmm. and we can come back in tonight as a more unleavened lump, a new lump, yes. a new assembly, yes. praise God, keep the feast. We're going to keep the feast, Amen. but not with the old leaven, <coughs> not with the old influence of the flesh and nature of doctrine and sin and the ingredients of the world that keep the feast, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth, not uh, with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Well, I'm ready to keep the feast. I thank God for my Passover. I'm going to do my best to keep the next seven days with the unleavened bread that's the perfect time of God. And then I want to be able to have some first fruits. And the Lord accept my first fruits and say, I, I accept what you have as a first fruit offering of the righteousness of God in you. And everyone said, Praise the Lord. 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 And praise the Lord. Amen. 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 I hope you've enjoyed this Sunday's worship, and I hope you've enjoyed today, and I hope some part of it has been good and profitable, and I hope it will bring you back tonight with enthusiasm and a desire, and who knows what the Holy Ghost could do tonight in the house of God if we come together to say praise the Lord and give Him rejoicing 
Amen, amen, amen. Praise our God. All right, without further ado, uh, may the Lord give you something to eat between your services and a time of refreshing and bless each other in fellowship before we leave and come at 6 o'clock looking forward to revival from God tonight and what God will do in the midst of his people. Praise the name of the Lord. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Rise up with me right now, your pastor, and let's give the Lord a praise offering and thank him for this day. Amen, amen, amen. Father, we thank you. We give you the praise right now for this day, the day the Lord hath made, the day the Lord has given us grace, and the day the Lord has talked to our hearts. Go with us, and we'll keep the feast, not with malice and wickedness, but with the bread of sincerity and truth. In Jesus' name, we thank you for the Passover. We thank you for the bread and leaven. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord. Next, next thing that God wants for you to do is to fellowship your